What's going on, everyone? It is Atlas. We're back for a brand new episode. In the last episode, we built this wood mill behind us and it started to transform this entire starter area into something truly unique. I am so proud of how this area is coming along so far. We built this awesome dock. All these little details, super pumped about these. Uh, we're not gonna talk about this side yet, but we started building this wood mill and transforming this entire area into something awesome. Also last episode, we went through and got all these materials from the experimental features trial chamber. And if you guys didn't see that, please go back and watch it. It was a ton of fun of an episode to make. It was kind of long, but I had a ton of fun making it. And last episode, we built this log mill to store all of our wooden materials as we start to chop down forests and collecting for bigger and better projects. Start moving everything over in between episodes. And to be honest, I just released the episode this morning and I'm already, I'm already back. But I really need to get started because we have some big plans for today's episode. In this episode, we're going to transform this entire starting area or as much as I possibly can in these episodes. I have such big plans in this world and I think we really need to start it off by getting these crucial farms out of the way. Every Minecraft world has essentials that we're going to need to get started. Unfortunately, with the impending villager trading that we're going to need to do, I say we start off by getting a villager breeder. Are villagers overpowered? Probably. Does it suck to move them? 100%. First, I needed to head into the nether to quickly get some more blaze rods to make a brewing stand. I've been playing Minecraft since early 2011, late 2010, and I remember the days of having to memorize all the crafting recipes so you weren't constantly trying to look things up on the wiki. So with no cheating, could you tell me the brewing stand recipe from memory? And time's up. Hey, if you got it, good on you. But it's blocks like this that make this magical little green book so clutch in modern day Minecraft. Back with a blue biome. So I know I went this way. The power of mushroom compels you. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. Ah, here we go. Don't touch me. Don't do it. You're gonna regret it. Dude, I don't remember. Ow, ow, ow. I'm hurting. I'm hurting, I'm screwed. We need a couple blazes. I would love to find the actual blaze spawner. So this is a wild spot for a blaze spawner. Hold. This is like a perfect location for a blaze spawner. Because it's like, oh, hi, hello. Eight. Yeah. Just place this here. Nothing up here. That's a little sketchy because I see that drop. We're gonna go this way. He just despawned in front. No, he didn't. I'm actually, surprised I can reach up there. Hold on, let me set this up. Come here. I just don't want this guy to get hit. See, that, that could be a problem. Go. None of that, but that's fine. Go here. I don't need that many of these blaze rods. Let's 
boxes. Something, and I would love to find a bastion. Just look how like weird this biome is. I think I would have to level this for a wither skelly farm. To be honest, I've never really made one. Ooh, portal. I think I've been up there before. But on that... That's the other blaze farm, so I don't love that. Oh, it's in the wall? What? I think this helps. Never mind. We're up. All I want to do is light that up. Now that we're done in the nether, it's time for the daunting task of getting the zombie villagers cured and into the villager breeder. This might go horribly wrong. Come here, little guy. Can you cross this bridge? You can't. Okay, come here. Let's go, I got one. You're next. Ow. No, 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 no. <laughs> Please, let's go. Just go, just go, just go, just go, no. Villagers drive me crazy. Here, come here. Do you want the composter? Oh wait, I gotta hit you with the bed. No, come here, come here, come here. No, villagers are so annoying. Come here. They'll say they're so OP. Where'd he go? Excuse me? Make cool windows. These these would be so fun. So you're really gonna make me break a hole inside of my house. Uh wrong place. Thank you. We fixed this. <laughs> oh, villagers are something else. We got one. Let's go. <laughs> I mentioned in the last episode that villagers are a ton of work. So getting this base down is such a crucial step. And we're not going to be making this huge villager trading hall or anything today. But I definitely need a mending book trader as my tools and gear have taken such a beating over the last couple episodes. Uh, three? Yeah, we're gonna do it. There we go. We got our mending trader. It only took us like forever, but we got it. That is incredible. So now let me just place you. This is your permanent home. You live with the beast. And you kind of look like you live with the beast. That's okay. We got a mending book. Let's go. I also like, I really like that he lives in this building though. With some of our villager troubles out of the way, now it's time we turn our focus towards the real project of this episode. Really, dude? Somehow this fox got into my chicken pen. Luckily, if you look up at the top left, 
I do have quite a bit of entities here. So I guess the fox is just going to do me a favor. Okay, then. That's tough. I have just enough iron for an anvil. Luckily, we're making the iron farm right now. It's not the best helmet we can make, but it's it'll work. And we are mending on all my tools. That is incredible. Except my shield, but I don't really care about the shield. All right, homies. It has taken me so long because villagers are so fun to deal with. But behind us, we have an iron farm. Let's go check it out. So this is a very simple design. This isn't like a super industrial one. I plan on building a way bigger one when we need it. But normally just for one person, I'm not flying through that much iron. And if I am, I'll just build a new farm. Currently, we are cooking on iron. Uh, let me show you guys the design here. So this is just so that the line of sight breaks, they get scared, and an iron golem spawns up. Now, we'll say I did clear this area, and this is not going to be the final design. I just needed an iron farm up so we could start getting stuff for hoppers and crafters and everything because this is going to fill up decently quick and eventually i would like to mirror this design but for now we have an iron farm i've been going around this area trying to clear out all these trees and as my inventory is a mess we have started to slowly build up this area but i hate the torch spam everywhere so in this main area in just this little spot here i want to get some bushes i want to get some custom trees and a nice path leading one into the mine and having details around the mine but also leading us up to prepare us for the build for the iron farm in this area leaving it for nighttime you can see i've been torch spamming like crazy so really what's the plan next i would love to tackle this entire area starting with this this mine it's not my favorite thing because it's very starter of Minecraft. And you can hear I trapped a zombie villager on the ground just so when we start doing villager trading, it's a lot better. But I really like the idea of having some, some trees around as this house wouldn't... I, I was looking for... That zombie took me forever to find. And there's just one over on the hill. Okay. I'd love to have some trees, maybe a small pond. But the main focus of this area is transitioning into more of an industrial side of the base. Over towards the wood mill and the bee farm is going to be more farms and starter projects. But over here, I really needed to place the iron farm in a place that really made sense in terms of me always running around my house. And I didn't really want to place it all the way back there. I started to expand this way because I felt like this gives me a good direction in any way that I want to go. If I want to start. I just saw this guy spawn. This area will give me nice direction. Well, let me just, let me just sleep. Let me help you. So this entire area will give me more direction as we head back into more of an industrial side of our base. And as we'll build buildings up on this hill and develop this landscape more, I really wanted the iron farm to be in the middle of that. And so, so far, this is a perfect place. But in the meantime, I would love to get started on the mine area, and all of this 
this base area around because I love the way that this base is starting to feel is I'm taking paths everywhere and it's looking truly hand built everywhere we go. I think it's cool so far. I consider these styles of builds more fantasy, fantasy inspired. For this, I'm looking to add maybe a little bit more industrial vibe to it. So I can't wait to get started. I'm gonna keep cracking away at this general area and trying to spruce up the place just a bit. Okay, got one. Come here. No. Come here. Okay, I don't have any fences on me. No. Okay. We gotta try to find the other one. Well, that was, that was way easier. Hi. Let's go this way. Let me bring you to your brother or whatever that decided to eat all of my chickens uh can you guys come this way we'll need you for a way later project look at him with a little feather let's add more to the item lag over here come on we're just going to Tie you both up there for now. It has been some time and I have done some grinding. So let me show you guys around. Now this is not finished and I'm not totally happy with the area yet, but I wanted to update you guys as we've built some things around the area. So around this area, we got a brand new potato field. This one was just something that I kind of wanted to just fill this area out. And this is still melting my brain, so we're just going to ignore this. I'm thinking I'm going to tear this tree down and do something better here because it just kind of blocks the area from the ocean. But if we come this way behind the house, I've been doing some minor just area improvements like this this custom tree here and I'll be the first one to say that I'm not totally happy with it but it was my first real custom tree besides this smaller spruce here and I was trying to tackle a large spruce like this because we are in an old Pine Tiger biome. I think it's okay. I'm I'm not totally happy with it, but I think it works. Coming over here now. Coming over here, we have a couple of these smaller spruce trees that I wanted to I want to start dotting around the area. And I've done some pretty big renovations to the back of the house and uh, this surrounding little bit. But these spruce trees are nice to just fill in some of the gaps. One thing I wanted to kind of play on here was this house wouldn't want to live directly next to the mine, but this might be more of a town center. I apologize if I turn this way. I uh, lose some frames just from all the animals, which we are going to be moving soon. But I kind of talked about this before, but I want to be able to see through just the little gaps here. I don't need wide open space everywhere. And especially when we start getting into more densely populated areas, I really want this to 
to start to fill out with just a bunch of detail. So over here, we got a little pond, got a little dock. Just trying to fill in with not spamming a bunch of blocks everywhere, but tastefully adding some detail around. Uh, let's go this way. This area is definitely a work in progress. We got a little mine entrance here. I'm still still working on some of the details. But so far, I have if you hear noises in the walls, I have been capturing zombie villagers a bunch. But we have this nice little mine and it's a nice little track. How are they load the carts full of ore? And take it off wherever. I thought this was just cool little detail. But we definitely have to get the llamas over here to lead this cart. My brain in this game is so all over the place. Sometimes I want to work on the wood mill. Sometimes I want to work on paths. Sometimes I want to work on like a little pond. For YouTube videos and tracking a story, it's, it's hard for me to get into just one build. Most of the time I have to tackle more of an area just so... It feels more complete around the base. The rest of this episode, we are going to round out with the building of the iron farm building. I'm going to throw you guys into a time lapse so I can get to work. Let's do it. And just like that, we have the iron farm build. This is, this build took me so long to complete, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I love the way this build came out, but I severely underestimated how long it would actually take me. And there is still so much work to be done. So I want to give you guys a little tour. I mean, there's, it's primarily exterior currently. But I've kind of gone for a medieval industrial vibe. Let me give you guys a little aerial shot here. And this build is <laughs> pretty, pretty big. There are so many details in this build that I would love to walk you guys through. But the interior, the interior is not even close to done. This build took me about seven hours. I didn't design any of this at all ahead of time. I picked a block palette and I just went for it. So as you can see here, we have this central column where we cook the iron or we, you know, get the iron golems. And I just love these new copper blocks so much. And to be honest, this build is, I think, looks a lot better from a distance. It just has a lot of depth to it. But heading around, I'll give you guys a good 360. Some of the walls are pretty flat, but there's going to be a bunch of details in here that I didn't really think we needed to add or over add a bunch of details to make it look too busy. We have this big grinding wheel here with the kind of furnace in the front. This is pretty much where I'd imagine, you know, they're grinding up resources, they're melting down the iron. Or on the back, we still have a bunch of details to do, but I love the way that this came out. It's it's such a large building that walking up close doesn't really do it justice. But heading inside, 
it's completely empty. And normally on an episode like this, I would love to do the interior and all of that, but I have been nonstop trying to spawn proof this thing. And there was a couple weird bugs that I found with spawn proofing. So I didn't want to do the interior yet before I do more testing. But next time we're going to do an interior of a storage system here. We're going to pull all of it in with some auto crafters. Probably have a system here as well. And make a really nice interior. I'm definitely not going to make the entire thing with rooms and all furnished and everything like that. But this iron farm is, is working well. It's not the most efficient iron farm in the world, but I will say it is one of the best looking iron farms I have seen. Let me give you guys some aerial views just to give you guys different angles. And I will say that I've never really used sandstone, birch, uh, the smooth sandstone as well. But I do really like the way that build is looking. One thing I want to say is copper takes so long to oxidize and so you can kind of see these patches. And so once once it fully oxidizes down, I think I will go through and do all the honey. But that's kind of something for in between episodes. I'm super happy with how this build came out, and I definitely didn't get done everything I wanted to in this episode. But this project, I severely underestimated how much work it was going to be. Just collecting resources and climbing up that high. I kept having to make the build larger and larger to make sure that no iron golems were spawning. But I definitely think this area is coming along incredible. We have transformed so much dirt, so much puzzle, made this awesome little area in here. Our little pond will definitely be sprinkling in more trees. And through here, I've added a little just cave kind of like cave mine system with our, our lava and go through here to our portal, which is a temporary portal. And it always rains when I start recording. But just from a distance, we're going to stand under a tree. Just from a distance, being able to not have to see the entire build, but as we walk we start getting to see more and more details. We start seeing the smoke come up from all the chimneys. Just, it really makes this entire area start to come to life when, when we're just walking in. I love to see it. I will definitely probably remove this tree, as I said earlier. There's a bunch of work I would like to get done in between episodes, just because I don't feel like showing the same thing in every episode. Once I show you guys something, I like to just knock it out in between episodes unless I really feel like it's worth showing you guys. But that's going to do it for today's episode. I'm sorry this episode took me so long. Again, some projects I just get started and I can't stop. But I love the way that this area is coming out and I love the way that these episodes are coming out. So if you guys like the video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And I will catch you guys next time. Let me know in the comments what you guys want me to work on next. See you guys later. Peace, friends.